What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I'm the Malt Activist, welcome to the channel. And today we have a special dram in our hands. I'm of course talking about the Balvenie 15 Madeira cask finish. What? Before I begin, I'd like to welcome our first time viewers. Welcome to the channel. And if you stumbled onto this channel by mistake, please don't leave just yet because, you know, it seems like you're interested in whiskey. And if you are, then this is the channel for you. We do whiskey reviews, whiskey lists, whiskey rants, um, uh, whiskey vlogs, travel vlogs, and everything in between. So, you know, if the side of an, uh, a middle-aged guy telling you everything about whiskey is your cup of tea, then please hit that subscribe button and that bell icon, and I promise you will not be disappointed. To my returning viewers and my regular Patreons, thank you so much for being a part of this journey. You guys are immensely, immensely uh, special to me and I appreciate it. Thank you. Now on to the whiskey at hand, the Balvini 15 year old Madeira cask. Check that out. Now, what happened was my friend who was traveling uh, through the duty freeze, he gave me a ring and he said, dude, I, I've just spotted two Balvini travel retails. There's the 18, there's an 18 Pedro Jimenez cask and there's a 15 Madeira cask. What should I do? And I said in my most stern voice possible, pick them up before somebody else does you idiot. So he did uh, and he brought them over and uh, we've reviewed the Balvini 18 Pedro Jimenez cask. I will put a link up here somewhere uh, so you can go see that if you like. And uh, we kind of went through the 15 as you can see. There's not much left. Um, in fact, I had to pry out this last remaining like two sips uh, from someone's hand and be like, no, 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 give this to me. I have to, I have to review it, please. Please don't drink the whole thing. So after much fighting and, and cursing, I managed to pry this from uh, uh, an alcoholic's hand and just, just so that I could review it for you guys. That's it, no other reason, no other reason. I've drunk about like that much of it anyway, so. But yeah, so I wanted to do this review because I think it's an interesting dram. I think, um, uh, okay, I think a lot of things. Okay, tell you what, let's, uh, let's get this out first. Okay, here you go. There you go, barely a dram, barely a dram, barely a dram, what are you gonna do? Okay, so what do we know about this whiskey? We know a few things. Uh, this is finished in, uh, in Madeira casks. And what I like is that on the label, uh, on either side, they have the information. So it says, uh, 15 years of maturation in traditional American oak whiskey barrels impart warming layers of honey and vanilla. So 15 years in American oak or bourbon barrels. And the second cask that you can see on the label on the other side says, finishing in Madeira cask increases uh, complexity, bringing notes of fresh peaches, orange zest, and hazelnut. And so it seems like, you know, minimum 15 years in bourbon barrels and then a few months of finishing in, uh, in, in Madeira casks. So, you know, about, I'm gonna guess three to six to maybe nine months of finishing. Uh, definitely didn't hit 16 years, that's for sure. Otherwise this would have been a 16 year old uh, Madeira cask whiskey, but it is not. It's 15 years old. Okay. All right, let's see what we have in our glass. This is natural color and this is non-chill filtered. So thank you, Balvini, appreciate it. We're talking a bottle at 43% ABV, 15 years in American oak cask, and then a second maturation in Madeira wine casks. So that's what we know. On the nose, we get, uh, there's something that David Stewart Sir David Stewart, my apologies, uh, does something that nobody else can does, is craft a near perfect nose. And this whiskey is no exception. 
It has a wonderful, wonderful nose, bursting with flavor. Let me see what do I get. I, it's quite nutty. I get baked fruits like pears, peaches, and apricots. Touch of white pepper and milk chocolates. Yes. So that bourbon influence coming through nicely with the white pepper and the milk chocolate and uh, the Madeira cask with the stone fruits. So well done. Well done there, both casks seem to be fairly pristine, uh, imparting good flavors, which I like. Overall good nose on this one. Absolutely nothing wrong, no real off note. I'm happy to drink it. So, there you go. I guess there's nothing left for me to do, but dance. Mm. <sighs> ah. Not as creamy on the mouth as I would have liked it to be. What do I get? I get, um, ooh, I get the stone fruits back. So pears, peaches, and apricots. That white pepper is there as well. But now I get a little bit of cinnamon, some ginger, and an orange peel right at the end. But there's something slightly bitter on the palate for me. The mouthfeel is not 100% there. Uh, I feel uh, it's a bit thin. I would have preferred it to be a little more syrupy, but it's not. There's an overall um, warehouse mustiness that I get on my palate, which is not entirely welcome in this particular bouquet. <sighs> I would have preferred something a little more summery, a little more sprightly, a little more, uh, how should I say, a little more, uh, a little more sunshine. But I don't, um, I get, uh, I don't know if that's the right description, but you know what I mean. Yeah, just something slightly off on the palate for me. Um, that that hint, that note of bitterness coming through somehow. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, whether it's the, the Madeira cask or the bourbon barrel, I'm not 100% sure. But um, it doesn't live up to what the nose was promising. The nose was just promising something absolutely wonderful, like like a like a sunny day in spring. But the palate is a um, slightly rainy overcast day in autumn. <sighs> I don't know if those notes help you, but that's how I feel right now. Um, I'm not getting what I should have gotten or what I wanted to get. And I had the same feeling when I drank it for the first time, even though I did drink copious amounts of it, uh, I was not entirely enjoying it, to be very honest with you. And uh, my, kind of my worst fears have been confirmed. I let this sit for a while. Um, I did uh, drink it individually. Gave it the time and the care that it required, but it still does not live up to its potential on the palate for me. So disappointing, a disappointing journey on this whiskey. I feel, you know, the nose promised a lot, but the palate just did not deliver for me. And uh, for that, I think I'm a little upset given how expensive this whiskey is, by the way. Let me just tell you, this whiskey goes for about $130, 100 pounds, 110 pounds roughly. So, you know, it's not cheap. Uh, it's quite expensive. So I don't know if this is something worth shelling out 130 odd US dollars for or 110, 120 pounds. Um, you know, I guess it's up to you. I don't think I'd spend that kind of money. I'm glad my friend did when I asked him to buy this whiskey uh, for my videos uh, and he obliged and he was nice enough to do that. But I think after having drunk it, mm, I'm going to reserve the right to be like, hey, I think there are better, better whiskeys out there for this kind of money. Having said that, again, like I said, you know, still a huge fan of Balvini. Uh, still love most of what comes out from there. I thought the 18 Pedro Jimenez uh, was a very, very good dram, uh, quite cracking. Uh, I wish the 15 was uh, as good, you know, at least in the neighborhood in terms of the flavor profiles, but it wasn't. The palate let me down, even though the nose was promising. So there you have it, you know, I guess you can't, you can't hit everything out of the park and I guess sometimes that's okay, but you know, uh, but when you spend $130 or 110 pounds of your hard-earned money on a whiskey uh, and it leaves you with a slightly bitter taste in your mouth, then uh, 
then that's not a good feeling. You know what I'm saying? That's not a very good feeling. But it is what it is. Uh, I'm just here to report the truth, nothing else. So thank you. Thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I'm the Malt Activist. Until next time. Peace.